The Bay of Plenty Regional Council announced this afternoon it will commission an independent review into the flooding in Edgecombe last Thursday. The review will be led by Sir Michael Cullen. While some residents were allowed back to their homes for the first time today to briefly collect possessions, most remain displaced behind the cordons, uncertain about when or in some cases if they will be able to return. Let's go now live to the Bay of Plenty to our reporter Zach Fleming who's joining us on live view. Zach, where are you tonight? Uh, I'm at the Ruatahi Marae in Kawara, which has essentially become a one-stop shop for Edgecombe residents, Edgecombe evacuees. Nearly 500 people have walked through here since Thursday and received some form of help. There are work and income representatives, representatives from the council. They're offering people uh, free clothes, free food. You can have your meals here if you want. There's also free medical assistance. And for those most affected who have nowhere else to go, you can also sleep here at the Marae. But to put that 500 people helped into perspective, 1,600 people were evacuated from Edgecombe yeah. in these floods. So this marae has helped nearly a third of the entire town. They're getting ready for a, a dinner here tonight behind me. They're having a barbecue, and around 50 or so people are expected. So those people who are still out of their homes and have no idea when they will be able to go back, who may, for example, be sleeping at the marae behind you there, do you know when those whose homes have been most damaged will be able to start returning? No, so the common theme is essentially that nobody knows. So you will probably remember on Thursday they said it might be two to three days. Then on Friday they said it would be one to two weeks. And they're kind of sticking with that estimate at the moment of around about two weeks. But the people I spoke to today really had no faith in that estimate. Mm. I met one woman who, uh, her name is Ursula Mayo. She's lived in Edgecombe for 45 years. And she's almost resigned herself to the fact that not only will she never be able to live in her home again, she might actually never be able to step foot in it again. The floodwaters hit her house so quickly on Thursday that she didn't even have time to get her keys. I was sitting having my breakfast. Um, I heard a, I heard a, you know, evacuate over the phone, over the radio. So I immediately went and got out of my pajamas, <laughs> put my clothes on, and put the lead on my little dog. Looked out the window and the water was pouring down both sides of my house and it was probably two feet deep then, and it was. And this happened in how long? Rising. Oh. 10 minutes or less. I had to, I was out of the house in 10 minutes and it was just you know, chaotic. You, you couldn't, it was so swift, there was no way you could stand up. It was just unbelievable. And I, you know, I've lived there all my life, really, in the area, all my life, born there, and I've never, ever seen anything like it. I think it's worse, I think it's worse than, worse than the earthquake that we had 30 years ago. So you've lived in Edgecombe through the earthquake, through yes. previous floods. Yes. Do you think you'll stay for this as well? Well, I think my well, I know my house is totaled. My house is gone, literally. So um, probably not. I probably I, I don't know yet. I've only just found out today that my house is gone. <laughs> how did, how did you find that out? When we went to try and you know to try and get in, check with the fire brigade to see if we could get in. Um, and we were not allowed, so we haven't been into the house yet. Mm. So I've got nothing out of it. Nothing. Everything's there. Mm. When you say it's a no-go, the firemen took some photos for you. What, yes, describe to me what it looks like. Oh, it's terrible. There's bricks have come off the side of the house. The carport's gone from the back. There's a huge five-metre trench behind it. Um, everything out of the backyard's gone. The fence between us and our neighbours is gone on one side. It's everything, really. Just the shed, the car shed's totaled. From what I can see on the photo, the deep freeze that was full of a home kill is tipped up. So, and the car, my car's in the shed. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so everything. I've just, yeah, everything's gone. Mm. That trench that runs behind your house, is that kind of where the water ran perhaps and it's just cut through the earth? No, it's come straight through the through the house on College Road, straight through to me, bought the fence with it. Um, yeah, and the trench appears to be... I've never seen anything like it. It's, it's huge and it's deep. It's like a great big drain with a bank on it, a big bank on it. 
it's just awful. You you spoke to me about um, the outside of your house, what it looks like, you know, uh, bricks have come away and whatnot, but what about your house itself? Oh, it's almost broken in half. Mm, it's, yeah, it's just awful. Porch is gone. <laughs> My deck is there. <laughs> um, Whoever built your deck deserves a pat yeah, on the back, perhaps. Yeah, that's there, but that was on the front of the house, and I suppose it would have been protected by the house, it would have, you know, the water would, the force of the water would have been going either side of it, I would think. Mm. And, the, and the house was actually on a, was on piles, but it was also on a concrete base. So, not a concrete floor, just a concrete base. So that would have been protected a wee bit too. But it doesn't matter now. I mean, it won't be going back there. Mm. So, Ursula, what's next for you? You said there perhaps might not stay in Edgecombe, but as far as insurance goes, do you have insurance? I am insured, yeah. I am house and contents and car. It's a bit of a shock. I, you know, you always think that you can get back. You know, I'd sort of look, we'd looked at photos of it and, you know, OK, you could see that it was bad, but I didn't realise how bad until I saw the pictures today. Mm. I mean, you always think, well, you know, it mightn't be so bad, maybe I can, you know, I'd just like to get some clothes and medication, you know, that sort of stuff. Mm. You know, in a case like this, everybody helps everybody else and, and yeah, it'll go on for a, you know, a long time. Mm. But, yeah, I, would, I expect that our house will eventually be demolished. Who knows? I just... I've just got some good, nice stuff in there. A lot of memories there, you know. How long have you lived there for? Forty-five years. Yeah, and I mean, my family have grown up there and gone to school there, and um, and, I, and I mean, I was born in the area, so I've really been there all my life. Mm. It's not just a, like no. a physical house; it's actually a home. Yeah, it is a home, and I mean, my family come home, and my Randy's come home, and I look after the dogs now and again. <laughs> It's a mate for my dog. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, it is a home. It is a home, and it's mm, Nana's house. It's Ursula Mayo speaking with our reporter, Zach Fleming, for decades. Later in the program, we'll hear from the Med Services' Georgina Griffiths about more very bad weather heading our way this weekend. And I'm very sorry to say it seems to be heading for many of the same areas that have just been flooded. Georgina Griffiths with us latest.